Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to talk about the Beechcraft Bonanza. We're actually going to start a deep dive uh, look at the Beechcraft Bonanza and using it for different things, going cross country, instrument flying, all that kind of stuff. But of course, when you go flying, the first thing you have to do is a walk around. So today on Flywire, we're going to do a walk around of the A36 Beechcraft Bonanza. So when I start a walk around on the, on the Bonanza, I've already checked to make sure that the mags are off. Number one thing, if I use the, move the prop, then that's a bad thing. And boom, here I am on the step. First thing I look at is the wing walk, and then I look at the flap. Uh, this is really thin wall metal. And most people who have been Bonanza people for a while, they'll know that you step up using the step here, and you skip the flap. Yeah, it's got wing walk on it, but this is real thin wall metal and it bends real easy. So it's best to go ahead and skip that and step on the wing itself. That's reinforced and it can handle you. Uh, once or twice won't hurt it, but as a common thing, uh, it'll make the flap loose and it's nice and tight and that's the way it should be. So then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna look at the doors, okay? The doors operate real easy. This is a, a basically kind of a cargo door. It's real easy to get in and out of this airplane. You just turn it like this, pull it open, and then hold it open like this. It's got a stop that uh, holds the door open for you. So one of the things I'm looking at are the pins. There are pins here and here, and this is where the door latch is, right there. And uh, this is how you can operate it from the inside. This door right here has got a lever that operates this way and operates pins. Uh, these little things right here that actually grab uh, especially uh, stainless piece of uh, metal right here on the, uh, on the fuselage itself and grasps it. They're like latches right here. They're, They're also off. a locating pin right here that uh, aligns the, on the fuselage to make sure the door is aligned up here on the top. It's also got a stop, a locking stop that holds the door and then prevents it from blowing back and forth. So I'm going to look inside, make sure everything, nothing's going to be flying around or anything like that if uh, we hit a little bit of turbulence. And I've got the cargo strap here. And inside it, I've got a box where I keep things like extra oil, uh, rags, uh, stuff like that in my gas jar because I want to check the, uh, the fuel drains and see if there's any extra, uh, any water in the fuel. That's a bad thing. Uh, so. That is, uh, I'm going to close this door because one of the things I want to look at is the static drain, which is right here. Make sure that's clear. And uh, that's important. I look at the top of the fuselage. I don't see any, uh, mostly what I'm looking for is dirt, you know, damage, dings, uh, something that's not, uh, not normal. And uh, then we've got to investigate further and see what the score is. I look at the antenna. I've got GPS antennas back here. These are for, uh, actually for the Aspens, and then I've got the GPS antennas up there, the comm antenna, and this is the ELT. Uh, I have another comm antenna below the airplane uh, for number two. I look at so after I've looked at the top of the fuselage and checked out the antennas, I want to look at the empennage and make sure it's all, all there and we can go straight. So damage, uh, dings on the paint, chips, my antennas, those are my Vorloc antennas up there, VOR localizer, and uh, then I'm looking at the horizontal. Uh, again, big thing I'm always looking for is damage. I shake it and make sure it's uh, nice and tight. If you feel any wallowing, any looseness, then uh, there's a problem at the attach points. So the uh, elevator and the Bonanza uh, line and Baron as well are elevator. The, the elevator is made out of magnesium as well as the ailerons. They're magnesium uh, for lightness and balance. So I'm looking at those, these things, and I'm looking for, when I look in here, uh, make sure we have cutter pins and the, uh, the nut heads so they don't back off and we lose the elevator. Good, bad skill, that would be bad. One of the other things I look at when I'm looking at the uh, at magnesium uh, flight controls is I'm looking for worm tracks. And you look in the paint, and if what you see is, is kind of a little section where these little, I don't have them on this, so I can't show you, but uh, that looks like worm tracks. You know, they're kind of worming, worming their way around there and there. And what that is is corrosion, and you better take care of it because these are expensive. I think they're north of 15 grand for one new and probably nine-ish for something like that used 
Um, so pretty expensive. Check for uh, worm tracks, and if you have it, it's bad. So then I'm looking for the at the uh, trim tab, really nice trim tab. Um, you see the curved section is on the top, and that's good. That's where it's supposed to be. You're also looking to see this uh, uh, nut or nut and bolt actually rotate pretty good. Otherwise, you're going to get jamming, and that's a problem. I look at the rudder, and it's not uh, it's loose, not loose. I mean, it's nice and tight, and I don't feel any uh, binding or anything like that. I look at the attach points in here; they're good. And uh, you know, one of the things that Bonanzas have, the uh, A36 F33 series, a straight tail, is it has an AD for the attach points. And this particular airplane has had the AD done, and uh, it's not a recurring situation. They fixed it. It had a had a cracking problem. So, tail light's okay. good. I'm on the other side, and uh, it's basically the same thing as the as uh, the right side, the left side. Make sure that bolt uh, and the uh, trim tabs works fine. There's uh, no damage or anything like this. The curved part is on top. I'm looking at the elevator, looking again for uh, corrosion or dings or dents or anything like that. Uh, same thing for the horizontal and the vertical. The rudder are all good. The antenna's in good shape as, as well as the uh, beacon. That's a good thing. Uh, this is a uh, fresh air intake uh, for the system. I want to make sure there's no birds uh, living in there. Uh, thinking that that's a great place to build a nest. And same thing with the fuselage, looking for things that are missing. Like the other day I was uh, looking at this panel. You can look inside the airplane, uh, I was missing a screw. Stuff happens. So that's what a pre-flight's about, finding stuff like that. This is a uh, pressure vent uh, for the fuselage. Uh, airplanes that have air conditioning systems, this is an exhaust vent right here. I want to make sure, again, sure no birds are thinking that's a great place to live, build a nest. Static port right here on this side. Um, condition, windows are good, fuselage is good. I don't see any dirts and dings. The uh, flap is nice and tight. Uh, this one has uh, flap gap seals on it, so I want to check those and make sure they're not coming loose. These little covers right here, there's one up there and one here, and also on the bottom of the airplane. Those are wing bolt covers, and it's important to make sure that they're there, number one. Number two, they're not... Uh, not loose or flapping around because if water gets in there, there's a, they call it a bathtub fitting, part of the spar where the wing bolt fits in uh, like this and if water gets in there, it can just sit. And then your wing bolt rusts. And the bad scale, I'd say that's bad. It could rust and you're done. Breaks, not a good thing. This is just a duplicate uh, of the other side. Of course, we haven't seen that yet. We're started on that behind the wing. So I'm looking at the aileron. Uh, it's uh, not loose, but it, it uh, moves freely without a problem. Okay, this is an extra little trim tab. I want to make sure that's not de dented or anything like this. Sometimes hanger rash will cause that. Um, looking for stainless, uh, excuse me, structural uh, steel screws uh, that attach the aileron, because this is how it attaches right here and right up there. And uh, this is the rod end uh, for the control arm for the elevator, and I want to make sure that it moves freely. If it's jamming, uh, you probably should replace it. That's a bad thing. This airplane has tip tanks uh, from the factory. They didn't come with tips, uh, but uh, it adds about 15 gallons a side, so 30 gallons total, and really makes a huge difference in its, uh, its range and uh, flexibility to be able to carry that extra fuel. That works out to be, depending on if you're going to fly fast or slow, two to three hours, pretty almost three hours worth of gas. So you can do a lot with that. So we're looking at, again, dirt, you know, dents, dings, damage, and stuff like that. Uh, the field drain is right here. I want to see if that's leaking. That's a bad thing. Uh, it has uh, lights and a strobe right here. See, there, there, there's not a problem with that. One of the cool things about the DeShannon system is uh, the Osbournes don't have it. They're the other competitor for tanks. But uh, it's made out of fiberglass, and these windows, these little ports here, you can actually see the fuel sloshing around. And the previous owner had uh, marked off where it is full, uh, three quarters, halfway, and then a quarter. So you can get a visual idea of what's, uh, how much fuel is in there. I've also got uh, cinders in here, so I know how much fuel is in it electronically. Uh, one of the important, other important things to do, besides we can see the drain right here, this thing right here is the vent. Of course, when you suck fuel out of, uh, out of a tank, 
uh, you have to replace it. You can't just create a vacuum because eventually it'll vacuum lock and it won't go anywhere. So I want to look and make sure that there's nothing uh, building little nests in there either. I'm looking at the top of the wing, looking at the bottom of the wing, seeing if there's any dents or dings or anything like that. That's, a good, that's what I'm looking for. So here we have the uh, uh, stall warning horn, our stall warning vane right here. It's a little tab that the airflow goes, uh, you have the airflow hit this, flow over the top of the wing and over the bottom of the wing, it holds it open. And then when you get closer to a, an angle of attack where you have a stall occurring, you get some backflow of air from the leading edge here that flows back over the top here. And when that happens, it uh, closes, uh, closes the circuit and you get a warning horn inside that cockpit. By certification, that happens about three to five knots above the stall. And you get the warning horn, boo, you're getting close to the stall, do something about it. This is the pitot tube right here. And this is a pretty cool little puppy. Uh, what it does is it allows us to figure out what our indicated airspeed is. And it takes ram air into the pitot tube through this little tube. And bugs, in particular here in Texas, mud daubers, really think this is the coolest place to build a residence. So you want to make sure that's clear. Um, but what happens is, is you get ram air inside that, and then from the static air, if we, air pressure we have from the ports that we looked at, then we can subtract the static uh, air pressure from the ram air, and that gives us airspeed. Air speed. We calibrate a spring in the air, in, airspeed indicator for the amounts of pressure we have there, and then voila, we've got indicated airspeed. It's pretty cool. This is the uh, gas tank right here on the Bonanza. And it's, I like it a lot because it's right here. It's easy to see and get to and check how much fuel you have. So pop it open and we can look inside. It's got a little tab right there that uh, if the fuel is up at the top, we know it's got 40 gallons of gas, 37 usable. And then there's a tab at the bottom and then a slot in the middle. And you can tell just by looking at it if you, how much gas you have in the tank. Is it, it's uh, 30 gallons at the slot or 27 usable. All right, looking at the, the front of the wing right here, this is an intake for fresh air. And looking at the wing bolt cover right here again. So I'm gonna look under, under the airplane real quick. And one of the things is I'm looking under the airplane, I'm looking for oil drips and things like that to see what's happening. I have an oil drip right there. So I wanna know where it's coming from. If it makes sense, it makes sense. If it doesn't, it's a problem I need to check into further. But this airplane, unfortunately, this is one of the drawbacks of flying a uh, low wing airplane is you gotta get down and personal with the gear. So I look at the uh, brake pads back there. I look at the rest of the gear. Everything is in place where it should be. This is the squat switch. Uh, I mean, weight on wheel switch is what it is right here. And that's good, no uh, problems with that. I look at the uh, up lock spring and cable and make sure that is uh, the correct tension and, <coughs> excuse me, and whether the uplock spring and cable, there's a, the cable's got any fraying or anything like that. If it does, that's bad. We may not be able to get the gear down. Look at the condition, see the, the uplock roller. There's a little device right here that uh, holds the gear up in the wheel well, so you don't have to have it all being held up by the gear motor. Make sure that's in good shape. And then I look at the underneath the airplane, and what I find is, is I've got a little bit of a drip coming from my landing gear motor. And I'll show you that. We've got a bit of an issue. We need to figure that out. It's harder. If you overfill this thing, um, the landing gear motor, people think, well, ah, you can just put hydraulic in it. It's no big deal. It takes a special kind of fluid. But the motor works so fast that it doesn't take very much fluid to lubricate it. If you have too much, and this one, when I checked it, was full, that's bad because the, the arm moves so fast, the sector gear moves so fast that it just, you have a shock wave of, of pressure and it blows out the oil seal. And that's what's happening is it's causing the oil seal to leak, which means that I have to pull the whole motor out to change it. And the, the oil seals are not, really not that easy to find. I want to check the uh, fuel, so I check it that way. And the other drain is right over here. This is the main drain before it goes to the engine. And I check it as well. 
and I'm looking for little drops and stuff like that in the blue fuel. Avgas is 100 below lead is blue, dyed blue, so you can tell the difference between other fuels in there. Uh, Jet A is a different color. It smells different, feels different. And, uh, uh, 115, 145 is different. You can't hardly get that anymore. All right, this uh, oil drip makes sense to me because it's coming from the crankcase vent. So I would expect it to see a little bit of oil. Not a big deal. I'll just wipe it up and we're good to go. The rest of the now we're coming to the engine group. I actually have a couple of uh, temperature sensors on the airplane. This is an old fashioned uh, thermometer. Uh, it's not totally affected by ram rise of the air flowing over it, but is what that means right here. It's just a dial indicator inside the cockpit. This is a uh, temperature bulb right here, and there happens to be another one uh, right under there, uh, which maybe is aff affected a little bit by exhaust, exhaust flow. These are the cow flaps. These are uh, uh, gills, uh, a lot of people call them. And what they do is, is they uh, uh, influence the air, gives it plenty of way to get out from underneath the engine. Uh, the cow flaps control that when you're in cruise. You want to close these so it uh, uh, makes it more streamlined, makes the airplane more streamlined, and uh, you can control the airflow going out of the end. These are called Hartwell latches here. And it's real easy to open up and look inside a beach. I always latch it up here uh, so I can not hold the thing open, hold the cowl open while I take a look at it. And when I look at the engine, I'm looking for leaks, looking on the bottom underneath it, looking for leaks under there. And that's a telltale that I have a problem. Um, looking at the hang exhaust hangers, uh, just everything to see if anything looks different where it, where it isn't normally or it's uh, producing extra fluid or something like that. And what I want to look at is the oil. This is the oil right here. So check that, we're good. Make sure the oil cap is nice and snug again. Looking at the uh, wiring on top of the magnetos, uh, the uh, wiring for the plugs. This is the primer lines on top here. It comes from a central spider. And actually it's the fuel injection, but it also works the primer the same way. And this is the fuel flow, or fuel flow uh, meter. This is the spider for the fuel. So the Hartwell latches, while they're really convenient, they're, they can also provide a puzzle bit of a problem. What they do is they grab, grasp little uh, sections right up here. I'll pull it down so you can take a look, closer look at it. These are the deals right here. And there's little jaws, if you will, that uh, you open it up a little bit by pushing it forward and it allows it to accept it. But, uh, and then when you pull it down, it actually pulls the whole thing in a little tighter. And that's one of the things you want to check to make sure that it actually works. So in this airplane, this one is a little bit difficult to get in. So we push it in and we get one latch. And we get that second latch, then we can close this, the Hartwell latch, and we know it's gonna hold it. And I push up on it a little bit to make sure it won't fly open. On a good bed scale, it's bad if this thing flies open. This is about somewhere around 10 grand to replace this cowl, and it might damage the windshield as well as it leaves. So check it and make sure it's latched. Coming forward on the, on the airplane, I'm looking at the propeller. I feel the leading edges, and I'm feeling for rock dings and how rough that is. This is aluminum, so it's real susceptible to sand, rocks, things, bugs, you know, stuff like that. And if I have a rock ding in here that... Uh, creates a, a little a notch, then the stresses on the, on the propeller blade are enormous. It could rip off. And if you lost a propeller blade, say even just this much right here, um, the whole engine might come loose. So good, bad scale, bad. Check that. Uh, again, condition, things like that, anything that's not the way it should be. This is the uh, part of the uh, intake system right here sorry, not intake for the engine, but for the cooling system. And this is the number six cylinder. And this is one of the GAMI's mods, is it directs cooling air right on here on the bottom of the cylinder. So it's one of the number two and six are usually one of the hottest running ones. So that takes care of the, the number six. So again, condition, the propeller spinner, 
This is the alternator over here. I've got an engine heater on it, so the plug is right there. And feeling the leading edge again of the, the prop. I do want to move it because I'm not tall enough to actually test it all the way up. So I want to feel it to make sure that blade is good to go as well. Uh, this is the landing light. This is the air intake right here. There's alternate air inside. This is the uh, taxi light, the nose strut, and condition again. Everything is what I'm looking at here. These are toe pins right here. The toe pins are designed that if you overturn it, they'll shear off right here, and then you won't damage the gear and the uh, steering mechanism. And it uh, happens fairly common with uh, people in FBOs that are towing the airplane. They don't know what they're doing. So that's one of the things I look at. All right, same thing uh, on the right side as on the left side. All the lures, they're nice and clear. Uh, no dings or damage or anything like that. Cow flap, same thing, the exhaust. This is the external power port uh, right in here. And push the latch, open it up. And let's pop it open, prop it open. And again, looking at condition. Everything is where it should be, fuel lines, uh, they're fine, nice and tight, not leaking. Not seeing any leaks from the gammies, uh, from the uh, gammy ejectors. And it's all looking pretty good, well, as it should be, because it's only got a few hours on it since new. This is the battery box right here. It's a 24-volt system. Uh, and this one has, right now, a... Uh, wet cell battery, so it needs uh, drainage right here in case, it, in case it got hot and the acid overflowed. So I've got circuit, break, or circuit breakers, fuses that aren't circuit breakers, but uh, who knew? In an airplane like this and you still have fuses. <laughs> All right, so the engine compartment looks good. I'm gonna close this cowl, same sort of drill. Make sure the latches are open, they accept it and push it down, let me get, pulls it down, and it's nice and tight, so that's good. Okay, the next thing is the, is the door. Um, the, the doors on Bonanzas have a uh, stop rod right underneath here, so you can open the door and it pops in and you're able to get in and out without having to hold the door open and stuff like that. But it's that little latch right here is, uh, it can be abused uh, pretty well, so you wanna make sure that it's in good shape and uh, it still works fine. You have to pull it down to make it uh, unlatch and then shut it. One of the things we're looking at when we do the pre-flight is if that door has been blown open by the wind or anything like this, you're gonna see uh, these things damaged and pushed out, dinged pretty bad. I've seen that on some airplanes, so you, this is one of the things you want to look at. Okay, we've looked at the door, um, this front part of the wing, uh, again the air intake right here, that's in good shape, we've got to go down on the ground again, and uh, look at this, okay, so we're looking at the uh, uplock spring and its cable, that's in good shape, no fraying and nothing like that, the, the uplock roller turns. That's good. Look at the pads on the tire. It's all good, so it's looking good. And I want to check the fuel. And looking again down here, there's the uh, wing bolt covers down here. Make sure they're in good shape, uh, stall strip. This is the right tank. Uh, just pop this latch open, rotate it uh, about a quarter of a turn. We look inside the tank, and this is where we can do with our fuel. Pour it right back. As long as I didn't see any water, it's totally usable. So put it back. We're good to go. Make sure it's nice and snug. And again, we're looking at condition. I uh, don't see any dangs, damaged birds, or anything like that. Looking at the vent for the, the uh, aux tank, it's drained. This one has a little bit of a seep coming out of it, so I'm going to have to do something to fix that uh, pretty soon. Uh, I don't use the tips very much, but uh, I'll find an O-ring and we'll fix that. OK, 
Okay, again, the uh, side gauges, uh, the uh, lights, the whole tank itself looking for damage. This is its fuel cap right here. Looking at the tank, looking at the aileron, uh, screws, the trim tab. Remember that filiform corrosion? You might see uh, little worm tracks on here. That would be bad. Uh, if it's been taken care of, it's either uh, filled in or sanded out. Uh, there's not a lot of material, so you want to make sure whatever shop fixes this knows what they're doing because magnesium is hard to deal with. Looking at the rod end again, that it moves and it moves freely, and that's good. Okay, and the flap. Bada bing, bada boom. We're done with the uh, exterior walk around of the Beechcraft Bonanza. So there you have it. It's my walk around of the Beechcraft Bonanza. Uh, it normally doesn't take 20 minutes, but uh, what the heck. If, uh, if there's something I missed, let me know. I might add it to my list. And if you enjoyed it, uh, great. Hit subscribe so you won't miss the uh, next episode. But thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you next time on Flywire.